Welcome to the United State of Us podcast. My name is Erin Flood, and today I am joined for a second time (laughs) by Caitlin McCabe, and she is here, if you remember, she was here in our very first episode, Cultivating Curiosity, Um, and she has a company called Curious Herbs, and she's here today to talk to us a little bit more about practical use for herbal medicine. So well, welcome. I'm so happy to have you back. Thanks, Erin. I'm really excited to be back too. I had so much fun the first time. So I'm looking forward to this. Well, good. Me too. And um, I told her I'm very thankful for her for being my guinea pig and being brave as I kind of try all of these different um, iterations of the podcast format and just try to um, better meet the needs and the desires of the audience. So she was the very first to do it with me when I was definitely rusty and she even recorded it twice with me. Um, And, and this time um, she's back to look at kind of a different format of just practical uses and things that um, hopefully if you're listening today, you can walk away and feel like you can really put, um, put, these natural things to you. So thanks for being back. Um, I just want to start today by talking a little bit about, can you give us an update? Because believe it or not, the last podcast was about a year ago when we first did it. We're a little, a little less than a year, but um, you gave us your goals for the year that you wanted to maybe try to have your products in some markets and, and get more involved with um, developing more products. Last time I think we talked, it was elderberry and you were developing some products for arthritis that were exciting. And can you just tell us a little bit about where your business has gone since the last time we talked? Sure. Yeah. That's, that seems like a really long time ago. I don't even (laughs) totally remember what I, what I said my goals are. Um, but I, I did uh, develop some products and they are in a bunch of markets, which has been really um, a fun ride for me. <laughs> it's, it, I've never tried to do retail before. And so um, just kind of learning how that each store is kind of its own, um, its own business and they run in their own ways. And so it's not really like, you know, am I going to do retail? Yes or no. It's like, this store does it this way and this one does it this way. And so it's been kind of interesting and cool to see how everybody runs their own business and how they, how they do it. And so that's been a really cool, um, really cool experience getting to meet different store owners and and to talk with cool people. And so that's been great. Um, I, I have the elderberry syrup product. So that's always, I've always done that. I'll always do it. It's just, I love it so much. And then I did do a lot of, um, arthritis products cause I work mostly with people that have chronic issues, like particularly rheumatoid arthritis or chronic Lyme or, um, you know, just like a low level infection all the time. So I'm, I kind of make products for, for those folks. And, um, so that's been awesome. And then I do make a lot of my own tinctures, but I don't sell a lot of those in markets because I like to work with people one-on-one to, to put those out. And that's also something I learned going through the retail process too, because I kind of learned that I have to, there's some education that goes along with taking a tincture. So so I figured out more of like what I want to do with the retail piece and what I don't. Yeah, I love that. And I want to say that um, neither Caitlin nor I are like medical doctors, that these are things Mm -hmm. that Caitlin is um, a trained herbalist and has a, you know, many, many years of education, but obviously as people listen today, they really need to think about getting advice for what might work best for their body. We are going to talk generally speaking about things that, that seem to work for a lot of people, but as always, everybody needs to take that, you know, responsibility to themselves to, to make sure that they're educated about whatever they're putting in their body. So I just want to throw that disclaimer out there today. Yep. Yep. That's a good disclaimer. Actually, I, I think it's so great because most people's doctors are more than willing to like work with whatever herbs, like what all of the different modalities that people want to try. I've found that, um, you know, viewing your medical people as a team that can and should talk to each other and can and should know about what the other one's doing has just been like, that's the way to go with it. You know, take as much help as 
you can get, put together the best team that you can for sure. Yeah. I love that. I love that approach. <laughs> um, okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is we're going into the fall and winter season, which we're both mothers. We were both kind of chuckling before this started about kind of our busy morning and, <laughs> and trying to throw ourselves together and look, look presentable, which if you're watching the video version of this, you know, Caitlin achieved that. She looks adorable as usual. Um, if you're listening to the audio, you should click on the video because she's always styling adorable hair. Anyway, um, so one of the things that as moms, I feel like we worry about is how can we keep our households healthy as we go into the fall and winter in the Midwest um, as we enter big time cold and flu season. So can you just talk to us a little bit about maybe um, what we can do? Let's say somebody in our household does get sick. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to us a little bit about the things that you typically use or recommend for mm -hmm. when people already have some, like a, it's cold and flu season, they've come down with something. What can they do? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's definitely, that's, you know, the changing seasons is one of those times that's hard for our bodies to kind of acclimate to. And it seems like, you know, going into fall, we start turning on the heat. Um, we start putting socks on, we start um, putting on the crock pot and making soups. And that's, that's such a, like a biological human thing to do when we change seasons. And it's the reason is because um, it gets more difficult for our, our body has to kind of shift from trying to keep us cool all the time to now it's got to try to keep us warm. And we're not, you know, we, we aren't a furnace that you just turn on and off. So it's <laughs> that we kind of like, you know, different bodies do it differently, but we do have to acclimate and adjust. And sometimes it does leave our bodies kind of open for, infections or you know things that flare up just because you know we're working hard so so that's a time to kind of be kind to your body and kind of nourish yourself and um and kind of along those lines i want to just talk first about the pumpkin spice latte because i feel like everybody gets into this mode where they're like super excited about the flavors of fall and they want to go to you know get this crazy pumpkin spice latte and it's actually like pumpkin spice everything now i can't like the number of things that are pumpkin spice i i can't even believe it i love it i think there's oreo like there's everything pumpkin spice but it's it's a very um that's a very kind of again like a biological push it's because when you actually look at the herbs that are in pumpkin spice latte um, if you take out the sugar piece of it, like just wanting to have a, you know, the, the sugar drink, um, the spices that you're left with are actually really good for you in fall and they're really, really helpful. And, and so it's kind of interesting that as a culture, we crave those flavors because that's actually what's like healthy for us right now. So before you even get sick, if you're one of those people that craves kind of those, those warming, um, herbs and spices, that's like, that's your first line of defense going into fall. So I have a couple of those here. Like I have, um, I have a little bit of cinnamon. I have clove. There's, um, you know, powdered ginger. These are all things that you probably have in your kitchen already. And so, you know, instead of going out and getting that pumpkin spice latte, kind of honoring that this, these are the herbs that my body is craving. Um, you can add those things directly to your coffee at home. Um, you know, and add some, whatever you need to add to make it taste lovely and, and amazing is fine because, you know, getting a high quality cinnamon, a high quality um, powdered ginger, a high quality clove, those herbs are extremely stimulating to your system. So, you know, like cinnamon is really good for your gut. It's really good for your circulation and clove and nutmeg, all of those kind of fall pumpkin spicy flavors, they do this thing where they kind of warm you and they rev your, your metabolism because probably your body's taking in more heavy foods like soups and you're eating like that sweet potato. So your digestive system is also, you know, needing to do different things. And so it's kind of interesting that those, those fall spices that we crave are things that are actually really the things that are going to help you get through that change of season too, like in a healthy way. So, um, like I said, if these are spices you probably already have in your kitchen and just use them, you know, put them into your coffee. You can put them into muffins. I put them into breads. I put them into soups, everything. 
that's, you don't, you know, some people think of taking herbs as just like sitting with this tea, which it isn't, you know, you can add these wonderful flavors into what you're already cooking and you've already done something right there. You know, you've already started kind of this process of supporting your body through into a colder season. Okay. I just want, I just want to recap on some things that you just said that I got really excited about. First of all, I'm always kind of intrigued by this idea of like intuitive eating. And I think that, um, that people often associate that with like weight loss or calorie intake, or, you know, only eat when you're hungry or, but this is really, in my opinion, if you really think about like your intuition or intuitive Mm -hmm. eating, this is it. Like the fact that you, um, you've kind of brought to light the idea that our body is really craving. It's telling us what it needs in this season. Yep. Yep. That's mm-hmm. so, that is so cool. I love that. Um, yeah. I think often we want to like get into the, well, who needs the pumpkin spice latte? It's so commercialized. Like that's just Starbucks gimmick or whatever it is. It really is something biological. It's telling us what it needs in order to prepare for the season. So that's, yeah. that is, that's very yeah, cool. I love, I love that. that. And it almost makes me happy now when I see people getting really into it. Cause I'm like, Oh, they, they, they're listening. Like they feel that the only downside is that, um, unfortunately, if you go get the pumpkin spice latte, there's almost none of those healthy, good herbs in there. And it's just like a ton of sugar. But, um, like I said, you can, if you just get your own, you know, get the highest quality that you can, and maybe that's just a little thing of good cinnamon from the grocery store. That's fine too. I mean, you can, you can, there's a lot of ways to get it. I mean, you don't have to um, like grow your own everything. <laughs> you know, you can. You can do buy. we need it? Do we need to buy organic herbs? If you can, I would if you can. Yeah. If that's something that's available. The other thing is to get as local as possible. So there's a lot of people, especially in Wisconsin, that grow. We're going to talk about garlic in a minute too, but they grow ginger, they grow garlic. Get, you know, if you can get it local and organic, awesome. If that's not accessible, even just grocery store powder ginger and powder cinnamon is far and away higher quality than you would get in a pumpkin spice latte. So, you know, if that's, if that's what you can get, then get that, you know, get the, get the grocery store version. That's, it's still a step. (laughs) Okay. So one of the, so just to go back, all of these spices, particularly cinnamon, clove, and ginger in this season are things that our body needs and is craving for our gut, for circulation, um, mm-hmm. to warm our body, to rev our, rev our metabolism. Right. Um, and we can get it good, high quality, put it in baked goods. We can put it in our coffee. We can put it in soups if that's where it belongs. Um, yeah. But the important thing is to make sure they're quality ingredients and that we're skipping the sugar, right? We're skipping what's causing inflammation in our body because that's what the sugar does. So, um, you know, not to knock anyone's product, but if we can avoid the sugar, that's great. And if we can make sure they're good quality ingredients that we are adding cinnamon, clove, and ginger, then that's important. And we're giving our body what, what it's telling us it needs. That's right. Yep. That's step, that's step one. So, um, yeah, I usually add a little bit of cinnamon to my coffee every morning. Um, there's a company that's called Burlap and Barrel, and I love their Royal Cinnamon is like a treat. It's kind of, it's not terrible expensive. It's it's like kind of middle of the road, but it's so delicious that it's, um, you know, it's so wonderful to add that to my coffee. That's just one that I use. I love it. Okay. Okay. So I have more ideas on preventing illness, like before we even get to the the sick part. And um, it's kind of funny because I think um, herbs just blends right into food. So I find myself recommending foods a lot too, um, just because, you know, obviously the herbs come from plants, but um, it it really bleeds into food. And I feel like I have to talk about um, selenium or selenium um, as a preventative for, for illness and for health challenges, because it's something that is typically in the soil that, Mm -hmm. you know, what we grow our vegetables in. And so we naturally get the selenium and unfortunately our soil is virtually depleted of it. So we just aren't getting it as human beings. It's not in a ton of food and you don't need a lot of it. 
Um, so it's pretty easy to get, but there's a lot of research that's coming out that's showing that um, any virus that you get, like the flu, cold, anything, people that have a selenium deficiency are getting worse symptoms. It just, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, um, it's really important to get in your diet. And so one of the first things I recommend because it's really high in these are Brazil nuts. Oh. And like, you can take two a day. There are these guys. <laughs> you can take two a day and that, get, that covers it. Oh, it wow. Covers, yeah. I, the, I make my kids do it. I do it. It's kind of like, all right, well, um, you know, we're kind of just replacing this nutrient that used to be in our soil. And it was interesting because I was talking to a, a horse veterinarian and she said, oh yeah, we've been supplementing selenium for cows and horses forever. Um, because that's their main source of diet is grass and they kind of have the same problem is that it's a little bit short. So it's one of those things that it's like, it's kind of easy to check off the list and, um, Brazil nuts you can get, I know at whole foods, they have them. Um, Trader Joe's might have them sometimes. You just have to kind of go, go and look in the, um, in the nut aisle of the grocery store and just kind of see some, they kind of are difficult to get at times. So um, I just get them when I see them, but that's a number one, really big one. Um, the second thing is um, vitamin C, making sure that you have good vitamin C levels. And what I love for vitamin C are rose hips. So this is an example of what a rose hip looks like. They're so my, pretty. They're so pretty. My mom picked these for me <laughs> yesterday on her property. They grow, they're, they're natural, um, and they're native to Wisconsin and to most of North America. So they're pretty much everywhere. You can forage for them. They're, they're obvious because they have this red berry. And now it's they kind of sort of, if people aren't watching, they sort of look like a really shrunken strawberry without the little strawberry yeah. dots on the outside, like a really, really teeny one, the size yeah. of like a, or like a grape. cranberry too, like a cross. Yeah. Between yeah. A yeah. They're, they're very, very cool. And the thing that I love about rose hips are that they're, they also kind of taste like cranberries. So when you find rose hip products, they tend to be kind of like that tart fruit. They're, they're really delicious. And they have a level of vitamin C that's insane. So like, for example, an or a medium orange has like 60 milligrams of vitamin C, but a half of a cup of rose hips is like 2000. Oh it's my God. So much, it's so much more that you just need like a little bit of rose hip in your life. Now you can buy rose hip as a tea. You can take it that way. There's, there's a lot of products if you look that have rose hip in it, like for vitamin C purposes. And to me, it's just a great, great plant to work with for, for vitamin C. I make a rose syrup now, so it's brand new. So it doesn't even have a label on it, <laughs> but um, I'm testing it out at a store um, in Delafield called Nourish that she's going to be adding it to some mocktails and things like that. But like, oh. you know, if you get a rose hip syrup of some kind, it's like this much that's your daily C right there. Cause they're so powerful and strong and just beautiful for, for your vitamin C needs. Okay. And if you're, if you're listening and not watching, she, she held up, it's like a third of a, of an eyedropper full of yeah. rose hip syrup. Okay. Yep. Yep. And, and I Caitlin, also, can I, can I ask you if I'm a, if I'm right now, like we're taking chewy vitamin C's, mm -hmm. you know, that are probably a absorbic acid. Can you tell us the, what's the difference benefit wise from getting my vitamin C from something natural, like a rose hip versus mm -hmm. what I'm That's getting at the grocery? Good. That's such a good question, Erin. And I'm glad you brought that up actually. Um, so like 95% of vitamins that you would take by mouth from, you know, Target or wherever are made from ascorbic acid, which is chemically identical to ascorbic acid that comes from fruit. So that's the good news. The bad news is that the ascorbic acid that's in a lot of those vitamins comes from a lab. It's pure, it's made, it, you know, it never came from a fruit. It's made in a lab. The way that they make it is kind of gross. It's kind of like if you watch the process of like cheaper oils being made, yeah. it's, it's like a little bit horrifying. So a lot of these companies, and I'm not saying all of them, there are some very, very, very good and high quality vitamin companies out there. Absolutely. But some of the lower 
kind of cheaper versions, like for example, emergency, the emergency packets, those are my least favorite ones. And um, so, so the ascorbic acid is kind of removed in the lab using like high temperatures, it's like deodorized. There's a lot of things that happen to the ascorbic acid before it gets to you. So it's this really like the least natural form of it that you can get. And so I just, my personal belief is that to get that as close to the plant as you can in the most natural version, I think is just, you know, better for you. But, but ascorbic acid, it is chemically identical. So you can go the other way too and say it's the same. So that's. Yeah. But <laughs> we, but we also know, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking generally and I'm not citing a specific study, but our bodies recognize what's most natural, right? That's what they're made to recognize in order to use probably. So I, I think so. I, I, per, I mean, I, I personally think that getting the food version of the vitamin is always superior. So take, so for example, like if you take, um, a vitamin C gummy for a child to hit their vitamin C amount per day, it's like an orange. I mean, it's really not that much. And there's a lot of things that have vitamin C that people don't realize have a lot of vitamin C. So everyone thinks orange with vitamin C, but it's actually, that's, that's kind of middle of the road level in terms of the concentration of vitamin C. Um, things like bell peppers and sweet peppers are really much higher. Um, broccoli has a lot of vitamin C. Um, you know, other, there's a lot of different, even vegetables that have quite a bit of vitamin C and especially for children, it's not much. It's pretty easy to hit it if, um, if you kind of just make that effort to make sure that it's stocked in your fridge or, you know, you get like a, a rose hip syrup or something. I mean, elderberry syrup has quite a bit of vitamin C too. So you could take that. Lots of kids enjoy kind of the syrup version. It's like the gummy version yeah. <laughs> in herbalism to take the syrup because it's a little sweet and it tastes good. So there's a lot of ways to get it without having to do, um, you know, I think it's better for people, if you can, to get away from taking 10 pills a day and yeah. just kind of do that food, you know, with using your food, it's, you know, it's more fun. It tastes better. And and I think it's well, and you're not getting all the, you're not getting all the extras too, right? I'm not getting all the dye and the whatever else is in it in my gummy that makes it look cute and like candy. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so let's see the other. Um, let me think here. Oh, so okay, when you do start to get sick, so that's kind of like okay, we've done all these great things. When you start to get sick. Um, one of the best lines of defense that you have for, for getting ill and what I use a ton in my house is oregano. Surprisingly, just the regular cooking herb that we use all the time, oregano has a lot of antiviral and antibacterial properties. So the cool thing is, is it, it's effective for bacterial infections like a strep and viral infections. So, you know, when you go to the doctor and they test you for strep and they're trying to figure out if it's a virus, because if it's a virus, the antibiotics won't work and blah, blah, blah. So there are herbs that are both antiviral and antibacterial. So um, mm -hmm. oregano is one of them. You don't have to really guess. It's just like, oh, I'm getting super sick. So the first thing I usually recommend people is go to the grocery store and get a bunch of fresh oregano. Most grocery stores carry it in the veggie section where the herbs are. Um, like they'll have them in those little clear plastic containers, or sometimes they'll just have like a bunch of them. That's your best bet. I love to use that. You can just use it, um, like take a ton. And I just say like, get a lot of it, like two handfuls, um, and then make a broth and add the herbs in. The one caveat is that you can't heat, um, the herbs that high to a high temperature. Otherwise you lose a lot of that, um, a lot of the um, enzymes, a lot of the different things that are in those herbs are kind of destroyed when they get heated too high. So you can heat the soup, you make the soup, and then you put the herbs in as it's cooling. So you're getting kind of like this hyper concentration of um, oregano. The other way to use oregano is you can get oil of oregano. I like this brand. It's called um, Joy of the Mountains. It's, um, it's an organic oil of oregano. You can get it on Amazon. And you can use this as well. If you don't feel like using fresh or can't find it, you can, you can certainly use this. Now it tastes very strong. Um, my kids will not take it. In fact, I, I have a lot of trouble with it. It's just, it's really strong. 
And so what you can do with this kids is you can use a couple of drops of it and add it to a carrier oil or lotion or anything and put it on the bottoms of their feet. Cause we do absorb a lot through the bottom of our feet. So what I'll do is I'll put a couple drops with some carrier oil, put it on their feet, put a sock on and just leave it on overnight. And my kids call it pizza feet cause it does smell like pizza <laughs> and they get kind of excited. Like, Oh, it's time for, for pizza feet. Um, and we do that at our house a lot too. And it's pretty easy to, um, to, to get done. And, and I, it's, it's a wonderful, um, defense against kind of coming down with a cold or any, you know, whatever you've got. Okay. So can you tell me, because I've asked you this before, and if anyone else is a real novice, like I am, when you say carrier oil, what carrier oil would you recommend using? You can, you can honestly use anything. You can use olive oil. You can okay. use um, a massage, you can use whatever you want. When you say carrier, it just means it has to be diluted a little bit into something else. So even if it's like just some lotion that you have, that's fine too. Um, anything. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> okay. And if anyone can hear Caitlin's poor puppy is really upset about something back there. I know. Can I go let her out really quick? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I have too many animals in this house. I, <laughs> I have I gotta set them, set them free. Uh, yeah, I should set them free. So, um, yeah, so that's the oil of oregano. I think it's, that's really, really good stuff. Um, if you're going to make the broth and go the, um, go the raw oregano route, I always, always, always recommend garlic as well. So okay. garlic is one of those things. It's, it's well known that it's very effective against illness. That's kind of why people add it to soups a lot in the, the winter and the fall. But um, you want to try and get the highest quality garlic that you can. In the Midwest, people grow it like crazy. So it's very easy to get. The way you can tell when you're gonna buy a, a garlic, if it's at least fairly local, and the only reason I, I would say that versus it coming, you know, from another country or something, is just that the time that it sits, you don't know what the temperature was and different ways that it got there. So that's why I say, just try to get the most local that you can. But usually when they're, when they're local, they have the stem, like even a, a little bit. And they also have all the little hairs that you see at the bottom of a garlic. The more little hairs they have, the, the more likely it is that it's quite local because when they ship from overseas garlic, they need to get the weight down as low as humanly possible. So they will cut it off as far as they can. So when you see garlic, that's like, it's got a very thin skin on the outside. It has absolutely no stem and there's absolutely no little hairs. Those usually came from far away. Um, when it's got more stuff <laughs> coming off of it, it's usually more local. So that's usually, that's how I tell. And that can, that just happens all across the, the, you know, like sometimes at Walmart, you can find local garlic because it's got all the, you know, it comes at least from, you know, California or somewhere. So it's just, you have to look and see, you know, what you can find. But same thing with the oregano is I take whole cloves of garlic, chop them up and just put them in raw. I don't cook them too much. Like kids yeah. will tolerate a certain level of it. So you might have to cook it a bit, but it's extremely, extremely help, helpful for like antiviral, antibacterial, all this stuff works really well. So we usually make a big soup of it. You know, we'll put together oregano and, and garlic and onion and, you know, turmeric root, ginger root, all of that stuff you can throw into a, a big soup and it's wonderfully healthy. Okay. And if people are like, well, how much of that do I need to eat or drink or lather mm -hmm. in myself to make a difference? What do you tell people? A little bit a day or... Yeah, I think it kind of, well, so I would say make a big soup and then have like a bowl of it twice a day, you know, take okay. a, it's, it's, um, it's a very non-exact science sometimes when it comes to herbs, but if it were like, for example, if it were a 10 year old that were sick, I would use probably a handful of raw organ uh, oregano. I would use three cloves of garlic. These cloves are giant. If I had a garlic that was smaller, I might use four or five of them. Um, I would use probably a piece of ginger that's the size of your thumb, you know, and, um, you know, grate that up and put that in the soup. Um, you know, that's, that's about how much I would use. And then I would use a really good quality broth, bone broth, if, if your yeah. kid 
where you will like it and take it. That's always really, really healthy too, to get those wonderful amino acids and all of that really good fat and stuff in, in your body. That's nice to have, but also just a high quality, like organic chicken broth will work as well. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, we have what we can do to prep with all of those good things. And now we're moving into, if we have, we have our Brazil nuts for selenium to a day, that's our preventative. Then we're shifting into oregano and garlic. If we're making a soup, we're making sure that we're not cooking the herbs at high heat because it's going right. to lose the properties that we want to take them, um, take it for. So, Caitlin, if people are like, I don't want to go through all that trouble. If I just buy broth that has those ingredients in it, do you think it has the healing properties or do you think it's probably prepared at a high heat? No, I, I would add it. Even if it says it's in there, I would still okay. add it. So okay. it, it, it's kind of one of those things like garlic can sit on your counter for months and it's fine. So just get it, get a bunch of it. I always have it starting like August, September. I just always have it. Um, it's, it's, uh, you know, one of those things and ginger is pretty similar. Like some of these yeah. things that are really great for, you know, antivirals and coming down with colds and things like that are, are fairly shelf stable. So mm -hmm. you can kind of buy them and just keep them around for when you, for when you need them. Um, you know, it's and also the tincture form is like this oil of oregano that I have in a, a tincture format. Um, that could, that's shelf stable for like two years. So you can just kind of keep them on hand as your, your medicine cabinet um, if you will. Um, and they'll, they'll stay around. So it's pretty easy to add. It's not like a lot of cooking or a lot of prep. It's, you know, if you're short on time, you can just take the entire clove, take the little, um, you know, take the, uh, the covering off and then just throw it in whole. You don't even have to chop it up if you don't want to. <laughs> okay. It's pretty fast and easy. Okay. Awesome. Good. I want to make sure I'm asking all the things that when, as soon as I hang up the phone with you, I would be like, I didn't ask her, what did I say? Cause I'm kind of the, the um, I don't want to say lazy, but I get anxious that I'm going to do it wrong. So then I procrastinate and then I'm like, well, I don't even have everything. I might as well not do it. So <laughs> it's good. It's good to make sure it's approachable. The other cheat that you can do is, um, is fire cider. And that's, oh. um, that's one that has all of those that you would put in the broth is in it. So I make fire cider too. I go through tons of it in, oh, wow. in um, fall and winter. And this is kind of more of what you would call an oxymel because it has both vinegar and honey in it. So some people tolerate apple cider vinegar very well and some people don't. So that's the only caveat with the fire cider. But if you do tolerate it, um, that's one way because typically what's in fire cider, there's a lot of really good brands. You can buy it in a ton of places. I make it too, but you can even make it yourself. It's pretty easy to do, but there's ginger, onions, garlic. I put tons of turmeric in mine. Um, there's a lot of those really healthy kind of ingredients that you might put into a broth that are in fire cider. So it's worth a shot if you want to go kind of the quick and easy route and you tolerate apple cider vinegar. Okay. Awesome. Okay, I'm so excited. There's so much good info today. Thank you. Good. Okay, is there anything else on your list that you want us to know about? I don't think so. I, I think, um, you know, if you just want one more product uh, idea, um, pumpkin seeds, because it's that because it's almost Halloween. Yes. I have to pumpkin seeds. So pumpkin seeds are a super, um, a super good place to get magnesium. And lots of people are magnesium deficient as kind of similar to selenium. It used to be more available in soils and things like that. And we just don't get it. But if you um, are carving pumpkins this weekend, make sure you don't skip the, the pumpkin seed portion because uh, like a handful has a good amount of magnesium, which is great for restless leg syndrome. It's great for uh, just so many body processes. Magnesium is just like- Well, even sleep, right? Yeah, it's awesome. I, I love it. So, so yeah, don't forget to do, don't forget to do pumpkin seeds. It's also a really good protein source too. So people who are kind of playing around with vegetarian or cutting back on meat, um, pumpkin seeds is a great, a great place for that um, protein too. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> um, do you, so tell us where, especially, I know a lot of people are at least in Wisconsin who listen. So can you tell us a little bit about where we can get your products right now? 
Sure. Um, I'm in Eagle Public Market, which is over in Eagle, obviously. And <laughs> I have um, fire cider over there. I have um, elderberry and some arthritis um, things over there. And then I'm really excited about um, a new place in Delafield called Nourish. Um, there's a, a woman who opened this new place that has juices and different things like that. And so I'm going to be doing some things with her and have some products over there too. I think we're going to try and do like a mocktail event, which I'm really excited um, about to add a bunch of things into tasty mocktails for people. So you can, there's like a, there are fun ways to take herbs. It's not just, <laughs> you know, it's not just like yucky tinctures. So we're going to be doing some events over there. So that's in Delafield. And I, if you go to my site, I have a couple other locations in Lake Country. I can ship. Um, I don't really ship like fire cider or elderberry because they both need to be refrigerated. And okay. there's awesome people making elderberry and fire cider everywhere. So um, I always just say like, if you want me to ship it to Georgia, just go find some, there's people making it in Georgia <laughs> that are really good. So those are the kinds of things I won't ship, but I will ship things like arthritis bars, tinctures, um, any of that other stuff I will, I can ship too. Okay. And Caitlin, also you mentioned, um, I think before we started recording maybe, or I can't, I can't remember now, but um, that what you've found at least in going to the market um, is just that people need individual coaching, you know, as well. So is that something that if they were interested, they could contact you about just looking at individually what they had going on? I mean, we were talking about my acid reflux issues before we started and. Yes. Yeah. I, I love to work one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, I, I do a lot with, with diet and kind of helping to coach people out of, I mean, I've had clients that eat basically McDonald's a couple times a day and helped kind of coach them through, um, you know, they're in a spot where they just don't even know where to begin. So I can help with that. Um, you know, stuff that you can add that's easy, like cinnamon is super easy. And, you know, I'm not going to say like throw away everything you have and go all to this, you know, crazy stuff that you can't pronounce and can't find. So we, I, I can help people kind of baby step towards that. Or if you have a specific, um, challenge, I work a lot with people that have arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune stuff is like my favorite thing. Um, I always laugh because my kids are like, mom, you're always talking to people in grocery store parking lots about their like feet. And, you know, and it's true. I love, I, I like to hear kind of what people have going on because, um, you know, those are things that it's, it's really rewarding for me because there's a lot of stuff that you can do for these chronic problems that, um, just, I don't think a lot of doctors have time for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a really personal thing. So sometimes these small little tweaks you can do individually make a big impact on somebody's quality of life, but it gets missed sometimes with the, with the, their regular general practitioner because they only have like 20 minutes to do it. Yeah. So it's, you know, so I can help some with some of this, like these small tweaks and things. Um, like Epstein Barr, I work with a lot and also mm -hmm. um, like shingles, that type of stuff that's like a, a migraines and hormone imbalance and all that stuff. So yeah, I also work one-on-one -on -one with people and uh, help them kind of <laughs> get that stuff straightened out. And it's, it's, it's really nice. Cause I think our plants just have everything for us that, you know, is just kind of waiting for us to, to connect with and use. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so if they want, if they want to contact you, how do they find you? Uh, the easiest place, honestly, I hate to say this is Instagram. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm, I just, I'm like a visual person. So my Instagram is at Caitlin MC. I'm, I'm like the most responsive there. That's a slightly embarrassing actually. Um, otherwise I have a website, my, you can email me at, um, hello at curiousherbs.com. Um, that's also on my site. My website's curiousherbs.com. So you can contact me a million ways. And if you're on Instagram, you'll probably get me back in five minutes. So that's the fastest. <laughs> no, no shame in that we've had that discussion mm -hmm. too it's just, <laughs> just where we are right now we're working on it we're developing <laughs> um and one one final question before you go um I have told uh our audience this season that I was going to ask my guests as you work through these things in your life um there's a reason why your, your passion led you here. And we talked about that in the first episode, which I hope if everyone has not listened to the very first episode, Curious Herbs with Caitlin McCabe um, of season one, the very first episode of the podcast we ever did, I hope they go back and listen. But um, 
one thing that I promised I would ask my audience or my um, guests this year was, as you work through all of these, um, you know, launching of your products and continuing to develop your business and helping people, what are you finishing raising in your self? Like, what does this do to help you grow and change and become who you always dreamed of becoming? That's a good question, Erin. I didn't know you were going to ask this one. I, I think um, just this empowerment over the more I do this, the more I learn about plants, the more I learn about um, taking care of my body using you know, the, the world around me. I think that's, it's really empowering just to kind of like take charge. It feels like, um, I think I talked about it in the first podcast that I had a lot of kidney stones when I was in my late teen, all through my twenties. Um, and it just was this really helpless feeling because I was constantly going to doctors and they were like, well, usually it's old people getting kidney stones and you're young. So that's weird. And, and so it just, it just, you know, it just, it, it is what it is, but I felt really helpless because it's like, I keep getting them, I keep getting them, but, you know, and I think that, that this process of sort of, okay, I can learn these things. I can figure out these plants. I can, I can sort of drive this ship a little bit more than I had been is that's kind of what I'm raising in myself is like, a, you know, this feeling of empowerment. And that's, you know, I, the, and the more I learn, the more I realize that everyone can do this. You know, this is something that is our birthright and our, you know, something that anyone can do. It's not me. You don't have to work with me and I'm not holding all the keys to the, <laughs> to the plants. You know, it's, I think it's great because every single person can kind of do this for themselves and, and learn about this themselves and kind of go on that journey. So I, I like the, the feeling of empowerment for sure that it brings. That's beautiful. I love that. <laughs> Sorry to spring it on you, but I knew you could handle it. Uh, thanks, Erin. <laughs> uh, well, that concludes this episode of the United States of, of Us podcast. Caitlin, thanks for coming back. Thanks for always being willing to share your vast knowledge with us. I know that you helped a lot of people today, and I know that they're going to be Looking you up um, on CuriousHerbs.com or on Instagram at Caitlin.mc. Check her out and um, please share this episode with your friends.